everybody and welcome back to Northern Lion Plays XCOM Enemy Unknown. I have some bad news and some good news and I'm going to give you the bad news first. The bad news is my existing save file that you've come to know and love. You know, Major, Pete Cachu, Carol King, Aaron Dactyl. That squad is dead and gone. I actually, I mentioned this in a couple other videos, but I made a move across the country recently. I brought the save file with me. I recorded a video using that save file. It was actually the one where you go to the alien base and assault it. Uh, and sadly, Fraps recorded it with absolutely no sound. But to give you some idea of the outcome, all six of my soldiers died. So I figured, you know what, this is high time to start a new uh, XCOM save now that I know a little bit of what the heck I'm doing. So we're going to start single player, normal. Uh, we're going to go Iron Man as well. And we're going to disable the tutorial because that is not necessary. So we're going to get started here. And we're going to skip over the opening cutscene. We're going to treat this as if we're just restarting like a Spelunky or an Isaac run or something. Obviously, it's a little bit more long term than that. Now, when it comes to bases, I'm actually going to uh, switch it up. I'm going to put my first base in Africa because it gives you monthly funding increased by 30%. Uh, I've been working around, fooling around with this a little bit in my uh, other saves. And I think that this is a pretty solid start for us. So we're going to have our first mission here. Just going to get back into the swing of things. We're going to start out with all rookies. And we're going to try to put the infrastructure in place to do substantially better early on in the game here. It sucks that we lost that last save. I assure you... You missed a bloodbath in terms of my soldiers dying. Like, literally all six of my veterans died. When I checked after the mission, I only had rookies left. So it's a, it's a damn shame. However, uh, that save was going nowhere after that happened. So we're going to start with the early missions here, uh, as is the case. Man, the fountain is looking a little bit wonky there. Uh, but we've got Kamjainika Farasani. So we're going to move her over here. Uh, and just put her into Overwatch. And my XCOM play, at least in my opinion has gotten a lot better over time. So I feel like we're going to have the potential to really, you know, get some good veterans going here, get some good strategies going, and everyone is going to be a lot happier, myself included. And Planet Earth is going to be a lot happier as well, because we're going to succeed in all likelihood. Well, not in all likelihood, but in some likelihood we're going to succeed anyway, as long as we play it cool. And the bonus, the added bonus here is that I can skip past most of the cutscenes that were annoying as hell the first time through. Because now, I know exactly what Dr. Shen and Dr. Valen are going to say. So I just keep moving these guys up, uh, and then setting them into Overwatch with their second move. And the reason for that is because, in case we actually do make contact with the aliens, I want all three or four of my remaining soldiers to be able to take shots at them, depending on which ones we, you know, if they're in range of them anyway. So that's all four soldiers having moved. Uh, we will go to our... Alien activity now. We do hear a sound coming from the building. Probably not a surprise. But let's move over behind this bench and we might be able to make contact there. Yes, indeed we do. So we get two sectoids. And usually these first levels start with two sectoids and then two other sectoids, you know, on the other side. Uh, in order to bring her to safety, we're going to have to put her behind this, I think. And that's going to be fine. It's not. I guess it's not safety because she can still be hit, but she's at least behind cover. Same thing with this guy. He's only got 25% chance to hit, which to me says... Uh, we will go into Overwatch here, and let's just dash over here and hope that we don't discover aliens on our right side, which we don't, thankfully, uh, and then we'll dash this guy up here. So you will see Steam notifications coming up in the bottom right as well. Again, I'm on a different computer here, so I still don't have all my settings imported yet, but I wanted to get some XCOM done because, quite frankly, I'm addicted as shit to this game and can't stop playing it. Also, you know, videos and stuff, but mostly... It's the XCOM. So we're going to move up a little bit here. Uh, I could possibly move to flank the aliens, which might actually be a good idea. Let's move her uh, over here. Tangenica is what I'm going to say is the name here. And that'll be all four sectoids, I think. Now here comes the question. Can we get some good shots on these guys now that we presumably have this guy, I'm not going to say flanked, but uh, in a better position? Let's just move back one space. Because I'm worried that the other alien is going to be able to shoot us a lot better. That's going to be a miss, I think. No, it's a hit, but it only did two damage. That's fine. Uh, again, what's the percentage chance here? 48% chance. That's worth taking, I think. That's a miss. And please do not miss this one. 45% chance. We might as well use the pistol, because uh, we only have one hit to do anyway. Ah, good. That was a, a clutch get there, actually, because if we'd missed that, we would have been uh, had our backs exposed to a lot of these enemies. But hopefully, uh, we'll find ourselves in a pretty good position here. I don't think that we're going to be in too much danger. I also don't think... Uh, the only person who would be in any danger is this lady over here, uh, who we can't see just yet. But I think she's actually going to be able to flank some of these aliens. 61% chance to hit is pretty damn good. So let's... Oh, I think I went for the 25 by accident. 
Don't let me down here. Oh, that's a big miss. That was stupid because I did have uh, that alien flanked. Here we go. 45 and 25. That's an easy 45% chance here. That's going to miss. Again, you can just tell by the camera angles at this point. Uh, and we may want to start making some moves elsewhere now. Like maybe move this guy up here. What are his chances now? 45? Well, that's as good as it gets, apparently. It's going to miss as well. No, it's going to hit, but it's not going to kill. Thank you, my Canadian brother. And for this, 45 and 25. We might as well take the 45% chance with the pistol again. Sadly, he could not be clutched twice in a row. Anyway, we're going to see if these guys actually go on the assault now, which is what I want, because if they move into a less defensible position, it's going to be much easier for us to do something. So we are going to be able to probably kill that... Uh, mind-melding alien in there, and if we do that, we'll be able to get two kills on two sectoids at once. So he's probably going to take a shot somewhere. It actually did hit, which surprised me. I didn't expect him to get a, an easy target there. But that's okay. So we're going to focus on this one over here. Is he going to take another shot? I didn't think he would have the opportunity to do so. Uh, but that's okay. Alright, so we really want to kill that third alien, the one doing the mind-melding. The annoying one. And I think if we come in through here, we should get a pretty damn good shot at him. We could also just throw a grenade at him, which might be better than taking 45% chance to hit. Instead, we can just toss a grenade. It's bad for science, but good for business. And this grenade right here should kill two sectoids and allow us to get out of here without actually you know, getting involved in any uh, seriously potentially damaging stuff, particularly with a soldier who's almost dead, which is the part that worries me the most. Okay, we have Chris Wagner, 45% chance to hit. Uh, we'll move him over here. He should still have 45% chance to hit, which worries me. But let's switch to the assault rifle. Uh, the best thing he can do right now is probably take that chance, actually. And it looks like he's going to hit and kill. And that should be the end of this mission. So that was pretty strong, actually. Uh, we didn't, we blew up a target, but we did get a lot of fragments as well. Uh, and we'll be able to start in on some actual research here. And again, nobody died on the first mission, which I consider to be a success. Although we did have somebody who nearly died and actually would have died if they got hit anymore. And of course, we're going to change these names into something that is going to be more significant for me personally. I want to skip by this cutscene because I really just don't care. <laughs> I've seen it before, so we've got Simpson, who is going to be a heavy. Obviously, we're going to change these names so that I actually know who they are. we got a sniper. And we're going to give them, like, super time force names. First things first, we got to assign some research. I get it, Dr. Valen. Uh We're going to research Xenobiology first, so we can get that arc thrower out as soon as possible. Uh, we're going to research in Engineering. Um, we've got to build a couple of med kits for sure. Let's build two of those. Uh, we have 297, so we should also build some facilities and do some excavating. So I'm thinking, first thing first, excavate. Build access lift. Get it out of the way as soon as possible. And I'd love to build a second satellite uplink, but we can't. What we could build is a power generator, or we can wait to build a power generator. And, and maybe put power generator over here, then satellite uplink over here. That's going to take too long. So I think we'll just build a power generator right now. And also, with 177, I don't think it's a bad idea to build a satellite right off the bat. I might be going a little overboard. It costs 100, uh, but in doing so, at least we'll have satellites ready and available. And remember, as Africa, we get more money. A 30% bonus compared to most uh, continents. To, compared to other continents, I should say. So, sorry, Squatty Donnie Simpson is going to get a name that reflects the fact that he's a heavy. We're going to call him Big Large... McHuge. Alright, I think that's a solid name for a Canadian Heavy. Uh, and Chris Wagner, as a sniper, we're going to call him... Uh, t -t 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 but Xander. That's a good sniper name, I would say. Xander Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye. I, I don't like... Maybe he's got a hyphenated name, like his mom's eagle and his dad's eye or something. There you go. So now I'm always going to remember that these guys... Oh my god, does he have the sweetest mustache of all time? Who's got the sweetest mustache of all time? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Okay, we're not going to name anybody else because nobody has really uh, uh, specified themselves yet. Like, they're all still just random rookies. So, uh, having done this, I say it is time for us to go on another mission. We should get another one right away. So where do we go? Mexico. I usually like to go where the engineers are. So that's going to be Australia, I guess. So let's confirm that. Uh, we're going to give Farisani here our... Uh, one of our medkits, anyway. 
And then we're going to give the other one to Ricky Martin. I guess it's Rookie Martin, but I know what name she's getting if she survives. Ricky could be a girl's name. Ricky Lake? Ricky... Ricardo? I'm trying here. So we're going to fly all the way to Australia. It's going to take us a little bit of time, but it's not going to be a huge problem. And then by the end of this mission, we'll, we'll have an idea of how things are going to shake out for us so Australia far in terms of like where these squaddies are going to be. Now get used to these squaddies because I want the, not just squaddies, squad members in general, not just people who have reached the rank of squaddy, of course, but I want these guys to be around for a long time. I'm going to try to protect them, use the rookies basically as redshirt style cannon fodder uh, and make some progress here. Thank you guys, by the way, for the tips that you're giving me in the comments. I have made a lot of good progress in my own gameplay at home. Uh, that I'm hoping is going to uh, extend here. So first things first, she's basically our support. We're just going to move her over here. And we have first contact already. This might be great uh, because our snipers, uh, they're going to fall back. It's not great. It's not terrible, though. Um, we're just going to open these doors and see if there's anything in here. I'm hoping the answer is no, but... In it oh, she can see someone now, which I did not expect. What if we move Big Large McHuge up here? He cannot see anybody. And this is a fairly good location for him to stay, I would say. And we have one sniper, who I'm going to put right here. And he might be able to see someone. He will next turn, so hopefully he's not in too much danger this turn. And we're just going to move this lady back here. Oh, not heal wound. Over here. And we'll put her on Overwatch. And I don't know, that might not be a great idea. Let's move her up here instead, so next turn she's poised to actually do some damage. Cool, and we'll see what these two sectoids are able to do. I don't anticipate too much, maybe a mind meld. Followed by a, a couple of attacks. Nobody should die, that's for damn sure. And we should only have four sectoids. I mean, uh, these early missions on normal start with only two sectoids, or two waves of two sectoids, so we should be okay on that front. Well, she's gonna take some damage. Again, the sectoids impressing me with their, uh, oh shit. That's really not good. Impressing me with their accuracy so far. Uh, that guy's gonna get close. So we do still have, like, our one squad member here. Yeah, should have a very good chance of killing these guys. Don't miss this one, please. Okay, that was really good. And she's gonna get a promotion. She's probably gonna get promoted to support. Because she has the, um... What's I gonna say? She has the med kit. But let's use a headshot here. That's not going to miss, so that's going to kill two more sectoids, which is excellent for us. And this is how Xander Eagle Eye is going to make his way into probably the annals of XCOM history. You know what? She should just heal herself. Because once you get a good sniper and you start getting a lot of kills, they rack up a ton of experience and they become even more like high-powered killing machines. So we're just going to move over here first. And I think, wasn't the other one, it was like just behind here, right? Yeah, okay, we can see him. We've got him flanked. He might not know that I'm here. We'll see. He knows that I'm here. And it didn't look like a miss, considering a couple of those shots just exploded right on his chest. Didn't mean that to sound as erotic as it did. We'll see if this 68% chance actually works. That might be the end of this mission. Jesus, that was fast and really awesome, actually. <laughs> that went fantastic. Fantastically, I don't care. It went very well, let's just say. So, uh, we should have Commander, to the situation. some upgrades. Like yeah, she's become a support. support got a smoke grenade. Sadly, uh, our rookie here, she got wounded, Everyone but she didn't even have a chance to do anything besides heal herself. So I'm expecting that Xander Eagle Eye is going to be a, a boss for us as we move forwards. So we do get uh, the option to build a workshop now. We also get five more engineers, which is important. We will be in touch, beyond this, uh, can we launch a satellite yet? I believe we can. Again, I have no volume here, so it's kind of difficult for me sometimes. And I think we're just going to launch this in... Where, do, where did we launch it that gave us so much money? Is that United States? $180 per month. That is pretty good. Um, but Mexico is 80 right? 50 Argentina is 70 Mexico gives us a scientist and an engineer. South America gives us a scientist. Okay, let me think about this. I think we should go with Mexico... It's not as much money, but we already get money because we're in Africa anyway. Uh, and then we are going to transfer an interceptor over there. So we'll go to hangar, view ship list, Raven 2 we can transfer over to... Did I do anything here? Transfer here, yes. Confirm. Okay. So I think that's going to do it for the first episode of XCOM here. Although, actually, first thing I should do is uh, name Tanganyika here. Something that I can remember. So how about... As a support, she's going to be Florence 
I think I was going to go with Henderson Florence Nightingale. I believe that is how you spell Nightingale. But in any case, as always, thank you guys for watching. This was a very good episode, I feel like. We got... It's a new episode, which may be a little bit annoying, but at the very least, uh, we, we started a new crew, and we got... Uh, we didn't get a great distance into the game, but we didn't lose anybody, and we actually got some really good stuff done. So I'm looking forward. I think this is a very good base for us so far. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.